Hello everyone. I'm going to miss the joys of going to this discussion forum every day when this MOOC is done. I can't, of course, comment on every posting because there are simply too many of them to follow. And therefore, I hope that you'll permit me to comment overall on the advocacy plans that have been posted. I've been speed reading as many as possible, and I have three concerns, three pieces of advice that I want to share here. First, if your plan includes a meeting with high-level decision makers, but the relationships with those people are not in place already, either directly or through intermediaries who are involved in your advocacy, then success is, well, highly improbable. As Ken Haycock has often observed, the relationship really is the advocacy. So if you don't have that relationship in place, you should start there and uh, build it uh, directly or, as I said, through intermediaries who become part of your advocacy team. And do that selection based on the nature of your organization, the nature of the issue, so that it's appropriate. Second, uh, you should make sure your advocacy plan focuses on strengthening support for your library rather than increasing use of your library. Now, there's nothing wrong with increasing your use, but as we know from the research, increased use does not result in increased support. So, uh, if you want to increase use, then you develop a promotion plan, not an advocacy plan. And thirdly, uh, it's really important to acknowledge that all decisions are made in an environment of limited resources. So this means that your request has to be positioned in its environment. It has to be realistic in terms of your environment. So asking for a lot of new staff members, for example, in an environment in which there isn't going to be commensurate revenue to do that is probably an unrealistic objective. So make sure that you meet that realistic test. And at a practical level, you really need to acknowledge that limitation in resources. And if you're looking for resources for innovation, remember that virtually all innovation takes place essentially through reallocating the resources that you have. And when you reflect that, you will get the hearing that your issue warrants. So I hope you find those pieces of advice to be useful as we wrap up the segment on advocacy planning. Bye for now.